What's going on everybody? So it's been a little bit of time since I've done a video. So I figured I'd throw one out there, right? I mean, I did post one not too long ago with some ribs, but uh, this is something a little different. Um, there is this challenge on North Texas Barbecue Addicts Facebook page and um, I'm doing it for that, but I'm also doing it just to do it. Uh, this is gonna be a chicken, smoked chicken salad video. And uh, basically it's just uh, a smoked version of making a uh, chicken salad for, you know, sandwiches or whatever, you know, or have it on crackers, dip, whatever. <clears throat> Cheers. This is my uh, pumpkin ale uh, I've had since October and it's really, really cleared up and it's really good. Anyways, I'm going to set that aside here. So. We're gonna get in here, we're gonna prep the chicken, and then we're gonna throw the chicken on the acorn ceramic and uh, let it smoke for a couple of hours or so until we get an internal temp of 165 degrees. At that point, we will pull the chicken off. I will let it cool down some, and then uh, we will mix up all our ingredients for that chicken salad. So let's get going, man. Okay, for this, we are going to use some Traeger chicken rub on this. And I've got some canola oil here for the binder. And I've got my little fillet knife here, just a regular curved boning fillet knife that I'm gonna to use to cut the excess fat off the uh, boneless thighs that I got here. So let's go ahead and get going with this, shall we? Go ahead and open this up so I'm not worrying about contamination later. Got a first thigh here. These are boneless thighs. Basically gonna cut off all this excess fat off of these. Throw it in the sink. And sometimes you can just pull and that fat will just pull right off the chicken. But don't be afraid to get that fillet knife in there and cut some of that off of there. And it helps to have a very sharp knife for this. All right, that's one that has been trimmed down. All the fat pretty much scraped off of it. A couple little bits here, but that's not a big deal. But yeah, that's what you want. Pretty much a fatless, skinless chicken thigh with no bone. So let's move on to the next one. And after I get through trimming this all off, we will get back to the rub and oil. So act as a binder. This is canola oil I'm using. And we'll put a little bit of that chicken rub on there. Now this is actually a citrusy black peppery rub uh, that Traeger makes. Uh, yeah, I know I'm using a Traeger rub and I'm smoking on the acorn today. I just like to kind of switch it off, you know, balance things. I like products coming off of both grills, but I really want this to come off the acorn today because I, I think the acorn adds a little more um, temp control, especially in the winter time. Not only that, I, I just really like uh, how meats come off. And since I'm using chicken, I don't want it to get too dry. And um, since these are very thin cuts of meat, I. Uh, would like to kind of keep all the moisture on the chicken as much as possible. Even though this is a dark meat chicken salad that I'm doing, um, it'll typically be moister than uh, your chicken breasts. And it's got more flavor from the little bit of fat that's marbled within the chicken. Perfect. Now you can use any rub you want. 
You don't have to use the Traeger rub. If you've got a favorite chicken rub that you use, by all means, use it. Whatever you, suits your pleasure. I'm going with the uh, citrusy, peppery rub from Traeger. And this little piece here, I know it's kind of comical, but hey, it'll still make for some good old cuts of chicken in the salad. And I will throw it on there too. Okay guys, so we've got our chicken ready. All rubbed down, oiled up, rubbed down with some uh, that Traeger chicken rub. We're gonna go outside here in a moment and we're gonna fire up the acorn and we're gonna put these chicken thighs on there and uh, we're gonna let them smoke for a while. We wanna get them up to 165 degrees like I said before. And then once that part's done, we'll bring the smoked chicken in and we'll chop it up. We'll mix it with our uh, salad mixins and then we will have ourselves a killer chicken salad. All right guys, here we are. We're at the acorn. I've got a couple of apple chunks in here. Um, I've got hickory chunks the rest of the way here. And I've got a bed of royal oak lump charcoal. Okay, it's all gonna produce a really nice smoke. People ask me all the time, do I prefer briquettes or do I prefer lump? I prefer lump because it burns slower and I also feel it produces a better smoke and there's less uh, um, additives or really no additives in lump charcoal. So. We're gonna go ahead and get this fire going. I got the bottom damper wide open. I'll go ahead and put a tumbleweed starter in here in a couple of spots. I don't really want the wood near where the tumbleweed starters are. I really want the coal to ignite. So I'm gonna put a couple of big chunks of coal here over top of these uh, tumbleweed starters. We just want a couple of big chunks of coal to really catch. So, just like so. Next, take my lighter. Get the paraffin wax tumbleweed starters lit up. All right, got our starters lit up here. Gonna kind of move these hickory chunks close to the coals, but not I really don't want them to catch right away like my apple. Move it just a little bit away. All right, next thing we're gonna do is put the smoking stone in place. Put our grates in place. And that's how we always get it started. I'm gonna go ahead and open the top vent all the way, just for the start. Close this down. Once we start uh, getting close to about 175, I'll start dialing it down to about the three. And then once we get to about 200, then I'll dial it down to about the one. But right now I'm gonna leave it wide open and we're gonna let these uh, coals get going. Okay, some of you folks have been asking about like what I've been using uh, or what I'm using for my remote temp monitoring. I am using the Weber iGrill kitchen thermometer. This actually replaced the Weber iGrill one because um, when Weber bought iGrill or iDevices, they uh, pretty much discontinued the original iGrill one. So I ended up getting this one free because they had to replace the one they discontinued through obsolescence. So, um, Anyways, we're going to go ahead and uh, put this in there, power it on, open her up for a minute here. Got a lot of smoke billowing now. I'll go ahead and set my temp probe right about here. It's good. I'm just going to put it in probe slot number one. I'm going to be monitoring my temperature from my phone. So I'll go ahead and open up the uh, app. And uh, I'll say start grilling. I'll pick grill temperature. 
and you can actually set your range so it gives you alarms and everything so I'm gonna pick uh, I don't know if y'all can even see this <laughs> let me brighten up the screen a little bit so now I can set my temperature range on here um, so let's go ahead and go with like I don't know 215 and the high-end 250 right set range I can pick probe one boom and see now probe one is displayed it's at 85 degrees right now and that's all there is to it guys i'll be inside the comfort of my own home watching the temperature and not freezing to death outside because it is a little chilly today and uh, once we get close to about 175 i'll come out here and start dialing the vents down to about three three or two and then once we get close to the uh 220 215 i will well, probably even 200 I'll dial it down to one and let the temperature just kind of creep up. This is a very patient time frame uh, when you're getting the grill going. And if you want to kill the alarm, you just you can either just press it on the grill and it'll shut up. It's creeping up pretty quick, so that's good. But anyways, what I'm saying is um, I'll come out here and adjust the vents down to about three or two when we get to about the 175 mark. And then I'll start adjusting it down to about the two to one and a half mark when we get about 200. And then the temperature will start to kind of creep up from there and I will dial it down to the one or just less than one spot afterwards. <clears throat> so anyways, um, that's what I've been using for a long time and it's worked great for me. Um, so yeah, I never use this. I know sometimes people do, but I don't depend on this at all because you're really getting the temperature at the dome and you're not getting the temperature at the grate. And what we really want to know is what is the temperature where the food is actually sitting? Uh, is it anal? I don't know. I don't think so because you'll be cooking at higher temperatures otherwise, right? So anyways, guys, we'll get back uh, when we throw this chicken on. All right, guys, just to show you here real quick. Grill's been holding at a brown, the 224, 226 mark on my phone. I don't know if you can see that. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and toss that chicken on there. I'm going to open the vent up just a little bit more, just to right at the one on both top and bottom. Let's go ahead and open her up. Ooh, nice little smoke rolling out of there like we want. I'm going to take chicken thigh number one, just kind of throw it on there like that. Take chicken thigh number two, throw it over here. These aren't going to really stick. I'll tell you why, because they're coated in oil already. So I'm just kind of tossing them on here like you would grill them. Now one extra thing I'm going to do here, we're going to toss a little more of that rub on there. Because some of it kind of dripped off with the chicken juices. And the thermometer's complaining because I uh, opened the grill up. But you know what? This is going to be the bomb. Boom. I'll see you in a little while and we'll check on this. All right, guys. So I thought I'd like, kind of check in here with you. Uh, I noticed when I was uh, inside, I noticed my temperature was starting to drop down to about 210. So what I've done is I've come out here and I've adjusted this vent up to about almost the 2. And I've done the same with the bottom. And what we're doing is we're just kind of like letting that air get in there and kind of get those coals going, ramp up those coals a little bit. And then once we start seeing that temperature start to climb, we'll start dialing it down back to the one. Now I know this is a chicken salad video, but I thought I would also be kind of candid and honest and uh, kind of let you know what's going on during the cooking process. But this is pretty common on ceramic grills. It doesn't matter to make or model or whatever. Um, airflow is a thing and you need air to fuel the fire, but you don't want too much air because then your temperature gets crazy. So anyways, I thought I would check in with you real quick. And I've had a couple of these, you know, but uh, yeah, we're, um, we're doing good. I've uh, been holding steady close to, uh, what are we at? Uh, oh, right now, 210 or so, but we're gonna uh, just take your time with it. Um, I got it about the two. And a two on the bottom and I'm going to monitor this and then when I start to see it kind of climb, climb crazily I will start to dial it back down closer to the one. Got some good smoke billowing out the uh, top damper here so that's you now we're getting some good smoke rolling on this uh, chicken so 
we will uh, check in here in a little bit see how we're doing all right as you can see i got the heat kicking up some so i'm gonna dial it back down to the one i'm gonna dial the bottom back down to the one if it gets up to 230 240 i'm not sweating it man i'm in a pretty optimal um area as far as the temperature goes let's take a look at the chicken anyways right let that smoke kind of get out of the way first look at that chicken man coming along coming along so we'll go ahead and close her up we got her around the one the one on the bottom and just let her roll no adding fuel to this and nothing man that's plenty of wood plenty of charcoal all right guys we're going to check on the temperature of this chicken see how we're doing just going to pick a random piece here i'm getting close all right we're getting close we're about 159 so we got about six more degrees to go and check a couple other pieces here it smells really really good guys about 156 on that piece let's check this thick one and this one's actually in the 160s we're gonna let them go for a while longer i ain't worried about anything drying out it's going in a chicken salad anyways go ahead and close her down we're gonna open the vent up a little bit because we're starting to lose some temperature i'm gonna dial it to about the one and a half mark on top and bottom and uh we will let her ride all right ladies and gentlemen it's time to get these chicken thighs off the grill man i'm telling you look at that color guys is that something or what great color on these just putting them in a bowl oh yeah nice grill marks on the other side too those are some yummy delicious looking thighs go ahead and just put them in the bowl yeah these smoked really well oh look at that oh my goodness all that juice dripping off the chicken these are done i've already probed them and they are well over 165 degrees so now what we're going to do is close the grill shut the vents down all the way save our coal for another cook turn off my uh, thermometer and we're going to cut these up here in a little bit and we will mix them with our other ingredients for our chicken salad and i'll tell you what i think guys we finished smoking the chicken um, earlier I went ahead and I cut up a apple a couple of apples um, some celery 
I chopped up a couple of boiled eggs. I chopped up all the uh, chicken thighs that I had smoked earlier. And I also chopped up some onion and dill pickle. So also we're going to use some mayo in this. And however much mayo you want to use is really up to you. It, it's more about your preference. Do you like just enough to coat or do you like a heavy coating of mayo? Um, I like a lighter coat of mayo, so that's how I'm going to make it today. So let's get in on this a little closer and put this together. Okay, we have a simple bowl here and a spoon. Let's go ahead and dump all our chicken in to the bowl. Okay, set the bowl aside. Next, we're gonna put in our eggs and dill pickle. I add them both in this one bowl. And if you wanna know how many dill pickle, I use two dill spears, if that, if you wanna know, I chopped up two dill spears uh, for the pickles. Uh, this is about half a cup of onion. I'd say probably close to three quarters cup of chopped celery. And last but not least, three apples worth chopped up apple. Let's go ahead and stir this all together real quick so you can see what we're doing here. Just kind of mixing it up real good. Now you can put whatever kind of fruit, you can put strawberries, grapes, you can add uh, other kinds of fruit to this. Um, we just went with apples, uh, which is pretty common in chicken salad. So let's go ahead and put the mayo in. Now I'm gonna put a little bit at a time until it's coated enough for me. Start out with about yay much. Got a little more. About that much again. And put a little more in there. And that should be it for me. We're gonna go a little heavy on this. You want every bite to have some chicken in there. Just like that, perfect. Let's bring you back up. All right, guys. That's the sandwich. Let's give it a bite. I don't know why I haven't made this sooner. <laughs> Man, shout out to Kenneth Cunningham from What's New Barbecue. I'll put a link down to his channel. Uh, he did a chicken salad video as well. Uh, kind of inspired me to do one uh, my own way as well. And uh, man, that Traeger chicken rub is really good on this chicken. Man, you gotta make this. Go make one right now. Stop everything you're doing and go make it. This is killer. And man, it makes a lot of sandwich. You can have lunch all week with it. So guys, that's it for me for now. Um, so, sorry it took so long to put out another video. Um, I've been kind of lazy, I won't lie. I've been kind of doing other things too, like stuff around the house and whatnot. So anyways, I appreciate all your subscriptions. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, Hit that little subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell as well because if you don't hit the bell, you won't know I posted anything. So anyways, guys, until next time, cheers.